esta conferencia comenzará a grabarse. Buen día, Jaime. Muchos, muchos parabéns. La conferencia ayer ha sido muy buena, mucha calidad, sí, señor. Muy bien. Gracias. Thank you. Muy bien. Thank you. Parabéns. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, Good morning everyone. So, uh, while we wait for the rest, uh, I will comment. Uh, today's session is a little special. We will not follow the, our uh, common rules, the GILS rules that you are seeing in the in the scheme. But um, I want to comment that um, um, there is uh, there has been a lot of uh, proposals to present today uh, such as case that is uh, wonderful okay um, just uh, something like i don't remember 14 15 in in, in half a day um, and that's very good uh, we will present only i think that eight of them five minutes for each one um but the rest will have the occasion the opportunity to fernando i will silence your mic um, yeah your micro yeah thank you um we will have the opportunity to hear every one of them during the next days because we decided to um to hear one of uh, at the beginning of every session one uh, reference case uh, for the for uh, for the day if uh, possible related to the topic of the session okay so today today we will uh, review uh, eight uh, we have uh, made the effort to go through different countries okay uh, uh, we will have only five minutes for every presentation very important because if not we will not have time to, for for a common discussion of the topics or the sorry of the of the presentations um and we will start just just in time okay just now so welcome everybody welcome Ula. thank you for coming joining us no we didn't hear you good morning to everybody no perfect thank you um so as i said the topic for today is um references on on real um, implication of clusters on, on the crisis okay uh, you could say best practice uh, just for those of you that are new very very quickly we are joining here uh, a lot of different um, actors not only clusters that's the the main idea of this group we are sharing leaders leadership and we want to show that in, in lot of uh, occasion what we have been doing during uh, are doing and we will do in the future is to link with other actors and that's uh, one of the main capacities of the of the clusters and uh, we are sure we we are learned that we need to be even stronger on that we need to link with the social economy clusters we need, we need to link with the cyber civic society and, and so on. Uh, you will see during the next minutes, minutes uh, examples of that. Okay, uh, that's uh, we, we don't have time to to uh, discuss properly this this slide, but it's important to understand that we have divided our focus on four different stages. The, the one is the to understand, to know the reality, to think about the needs that uh, the reality is showing to identify solutions and to act, transfer and act. And I think that we will see examples of every one of these steps through the next uh, some next presentations, okay? Uh, cross-sectoral, cross-organization is the key. I think that um, most of the cases that you will see 
are involved in this kind of uh, collaboration. We have, uh, we thought that uh, we, we need to uh, take uh, actions on different uh, stages. The, the, the main one now is the urgent, urgent needs, uh, medical supplies, uh, mass uh, respirators and so on, and you will you will see cases on that area. But we are also working on the back to work, on the skill and education gap, and the the flexibility of the value chains. You will see that we are working now on that. Okay. As I said at the beginning, we ha we are lucky. We have received a lot of uh, proposals for participation, and at, uh, we have decided to uh, select only eight, five minutes per each one. Please be, be very, very, um, I, I will try to be very strict on the on the timekeeping, okay? Um, the first one is uh, Dolores Pla from the cluster map. Welcome, Dolores. Are you there? Yeah, I'm there. Oh, sorry. Please, if okay. you are not speaking, put your mic off, okay? Uh, I will give you, okay, the presentation rights. It's all yours. Yeah, yeah. thank you. You can see my screen? Yes, we can see it. You sound a, a little low. Perhaps you could. Uh, Good morning. Yeah, yeah. yeah please uh, speak louder, okay? And you can start because the time is passing. Dolores. Uh, Good morning. Now, yes. Now it's yes. better. Better. And you can see my screen? Yeah, perfect. It's perfect. Okay. okay. Sorry. Sorry for this. Uh... I don't know how where to put uh, couple things. You can go on. Uh, we are seeing everything. Okay. Okay. So, uh, well, good morning, everybody. Thank you, Antonio, to to give me the opportunity to present uh, what we have done uh, in collaboration with you and with the rest of the clusters. I just want to mention that our cluster, uh, called Advanced Materials Clusters, is a small cluster. Our structure is composed by two people, so we can do as we can do. And uh, most of the actions are, are focused on the uh, network connection, facilitating that the value chain is complete and the things uh, facilitating that the things happen. In this sense, everything starts with, with Antonio and Idea when, when he called for, um, for designing uh, mapping resources. You can see <clears throat> uh, in 3D printing on the, on, the, on the right. And with this initial initiative, uh, new opportunities or new actions appear. Uh, three of them, most uh, the most important ones. One is the collaboration with the 3D COVID tech platform that nowadays have a, uh, it's a platform composed of private companies that uh, voluntarily uh, they they start printing um, protection. Uh, protective visas for 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 hospitals for sanitary, but also connector air connectors for 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 the um, for all the uh, air respiratory systems and uh, components for respirators. Uh, nowadays, they have produced more than ten thousand protect visas. Also, another company uh, from the clusters. In fact, you can see that in green black color, it's the company related to the cluster, and there are only three in this uh, open innovation network. Sorry, I have a... Don't worry, don't worry. Baby. <laughs> okay. Only there are only three. Uh, the rest are beyond of the limits of the cluster and also beyond of the companies, we can say, including research, uh, research centers or, or society. Uh, the other uh, company that participates gives uh gives raw material to try to 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 be an alternative of uh pla uh, that is a typical material used for for 3d printing but in europe there are not so many suppliers so at some point we we realized that the, we don't have this material so alex polymer proposed EBS, another another material that can be also used for in printing the we contact to produce the the wire to use for printing and then the supply free to the companies to, to continue producing protective visas or whatever. 
uh, another collaborative initiative that we have done is uh, with the community of coronavirus makers. Uh, I don't know if Miguel Angel is here, sorry, but I don't know exactly how many units you have produced. I imagine that a lot. But in our particular case, we, we collaborate uh, with the elastic bands uh, um, developing prototypes for masks. Uh, if we can continue on the on the left, yeah, you can see that there is the textiles because from the beginning I realized that one critical point or one bottleneck should be the the, the accessibility to non-woven. So we start looking for synthetic textiles or other textiles that can be an alternative. In this sense, we find uh, some of them that uh, have uh, have the uh, have the right uh, oh, have have reached uh, the production of more than uh, 6,000 gowns in one case. Another case, the development of if if P2 filter already um, validated, homologated uh, for for the the standard organization, uh, even public uh, for the ministry. Uh, in this case, we we give support in terms because uh, they have to do a big invest to try to 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 give response to the high, highly demand of this, uh, this material. So we give um, support uh, and contacts to try to find um, cash, cash for, for a short term cash in order to try to, to do this invest and also give visibility, uh, facilitating the case to the media. Uh, another case is uh, the the company of uh, Jotaima Mestres that they have a, like a Gorotex uh, material <clears throat> And in fact, it's working perfectly, but there, there is no bridge relief. So we contact with the cluster SECFO and we are just collaborating now in a project that is ongoing on to try to nano perforate or perforate this uh, this material and, and try to control it and achieve FSP3 filters. Uh, in parallel, uh, if we continue with non-woven, we, we, we reach a, a company, ActiveMed, who donate uh, his non-woven uh, textile. The problem is that it's for hygienic uses, so it was not uh, the quality was not enough to make uh, filters or masks. So we 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 give them to the coronavirus makers. We collaborate again with coronavirus makers with the textile part, and uh, they have developed uh, an alternative. So I, I imagine by accumulating different layers. And I know that nowadays they are starting producing for age residents, for age people in the residents. Also, we are in contact with uh, companies that know uh, uh, or they have the knowledge related to non-woven, like Global Very. So they they facilitate us as a lot of concepts or a lot a lot of information that is useful. And finally, also with the mass producers that we have in Spain, mainly Siebel and Climax Productors, uh, we will with which we put in contact with the textiles. So we send all the textiles that we think that can that can uh, fulfill the requirements the, from, from filtration and, and breathability. We send them and they analyze and try to, to introduce in their system production. And finally, to conclude, I don't know if I'm I'm away of the time. Sorry, we are now uh, nowadays currently working on a waste management uh, project in order to try to give a solution for the the mass that the population will start using massively and can be really a waste management problem. And more or less, it's all of that. If you have it's questions, a, it's a lot. I see that you merit a medal. Uh, really, oh. really, the Lord. Yes, yes, yes. I need to say that. I need to say that. It's wonderful that what you have been doing, uh, you are creating a real movement in Spain. I need to say that, okay? And those uh, projects that you see in the screen, every one of those are very, very big and very, very deep. And and Dolores has been promoting, linking, and creating all these ideas and relationships. So thank you very much, Dolores. My deepest congratulations. Uh -huh. Thank you. Okay. Well, you you have been part of that, eh, Antonio. Don't forget that. A small part, a small part. Okay, thank you very much. So ne next one is Laura Cl uh, Carell from Safe Cluster. Uh, is uh, Laura? Are you there? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, you can hear hey, me. Welcome. Yes, uh, I'm giving you the uh, presentation rights. Okay. Uh, yeah. Now is your time. Um, Welcome. I just take. Yeah, you can see. 
Yes, we can see it. Okay. okay, so thank you very much for this opportunity so to present our initiative. Uh, so I will present a safe cluster initiative. So safe cluster is a French competitiveness cluster in the security and aerospace field in the south of France. And we have 450 members, to, just to let you know. And uh, uh, regarding the crisis, uh, so we created a catalog of innovative solutions uh, to deal with the crisis. So you can, you can see it on your screen. Uh, at this moment, it's only in French, uh, but we have the ambition to create it in English in a few weeks uh, to disseminate it widely. So we create different categories. And if you can, I don't know if you can see it. It's not really. We can see it. <laughs> uh, so you have uh, you have prevention, crisis man management, protection of uh, responder, uh, sanitary evacuation, detection, analysis, decontaminations. So we have all the innovative solutions uh, regarding uh, those categories. Uh, and we disseminate this catalog to end users such uh, such as hospitals, uh, sensitive sites, uh, cities, uh, to answer to their to their needs. And we have uh, today around uh, 50 innovative solutions included uh, in this uh, catalog, and it's really a success. And um, and we have a lot of demand to add innovative solutions in this catalog. So I just wanted to share with you uh, this initiative um, because it's a success actually. And there is a demand from end users also. And in parallel, we open the platform to share needs of uh, end users. So the same, the same one, uh, hospitals, uh, sensitive sites, cities, um, uh, for, um, to share needs uh, for innovative solu solutions to deal with the crisis. Uh, and so uh, the SMEs, uh, members of SAFE or not, uh, have the opportunity to submit their solutions regarding specific needs. And this platform, and I don't know if you, I, if I can share it, it's Ginov, this one. Yes, we are seeing it. Yeah. yeah. And so, so it's the, it's the same. So it's in, it's only in French actually, but uh, we have the ambitions to it in, in English in a few weeks also. Um, and that's it for me. So it was really quick. But, uh, yeah, no, was... but wonderful. It's an excellent example of how to uh, you are ordering the resources, showcasing them, and putting them in the in, at the reach of every one of the companies that need them. So congratulations. Thank, thank you, you very much. much. Um, thank you. And the, na the next one will be Frank Bosenberg from Silicon Saxony. Frank, I'm giving you the the presentation rights. Okay, good morning, everybody. Welcome. I will be extremely quick because I would like to donate two of my minutes to my colleague Andre Hoffmann from BioSaxony. Okay. Um, so now, first, my slide. If our best practices, let me put this quickly into presentation mode. Okay. Um, so we did what, what probably most of the clusters did. Uh, we set up a separate website bundling information and solutions uh, which are regionally adapted uh, silicon saxony day slash corona in our case uh, you have the contact data of the regional relevant persons etc um, then we organized webinars to exchange best practices and updates so we had a webinar uh, for best practice of home office uh, as many of our members did this already before corona successfully um, we did a webinar last week on uh, best practice exchange of homeschooling where we united teachers basically um, so that we leveraged our our link to the education sector they were very grateful basically because um, there is no real teacher cluster and uh, they lacked a little bit on best practice exchange um, of separate uh, options to do homeschooling from the teacher side uh, and we had one more technical seminar on effects on global logistic uh, chains uh, implemented with the help of our members uh, basically i have to say a big thank to our members which uh, which made most of our efforts only possible um, next, next best practice is in particular, their formats during the Hanover Fair, they decided that uh, normally, I think it was two weeks ago, they would have met most of their customers 
at Hanover Fair. So they set up digital formats, we bundled them, uh, and uh, one of our member companies said they generated 80 leads uh, due to their digital formats, um, even though not meeting one single customer uh, face by face. Uh, our digital innovation hub, where we are also closely linked to, uh, also did this. They organized so called Pinkerton. It's a digital co creation format. Uh, it would burst the five minutes definitely if I would go into depth here. Uh, and what took most of my time personally as cluster manager in the last weeks is we, we did something which is also not, not rocket science. We bundled the purchase of non medical, uh, reusable, washable face masks. Um, it's very simple calculation. Uh, one mask or two masks cost uh, 10 euro, 5,000 masks cost uh, uh, 3 euro 48 per piece. Uh, so we bundled the demand and then I, I made the order. We ordered more than 9,000 pieces and I calculated yesterday we, we saved more than 25,000 euro on behalf of our members just by bundling the purchase. Uh, and basically I'm distributing it uh, personally, so I'm driving from member to member uh, mm -hmm. in the last days, uh, distributing the mask, uh, yeah, holding, if, uh, of course, some distance, the contact to our members. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, but this, what, uh, this is what we are doing. And now I would like to hand over to Andre Hofmann, uh, BioSaxony, our uh, biomedical or biotech cluster, uh, which has a good practice or best practice, which is maybe even more relevant for the other members of this uh, of this circle. Thanks. Thank, thank you very much. Andre, go on. Yeah, thank you so much uh, uh, for giving me the opportunity to present here. Um, I'm just uh, trying to go into the, the presentation mode here. Um, just a few words from our side. So Biosex is a Saxon biotech uh, cluster for not only fo focusing on biotech, but also medtech um, topics. So um, when the corona crisis started, uh, we got a lot of um, questions from the healthcare providers if we could provide them with uh, uh, personal protection uh, equipment um, that was not available here in, in Saxony at, at that time. And in some points, it still isn't really available here. So uh, there was a uh, call from the European Union also regarding uh, the support on uh, the supply of medical devices uh, by 3D printing, uh, mostly in, in the, the area of uh, respiration uh, support. And uh, we got in contact with uh, an, another cluster, you could say, or an association of uh, research institutes, only research institutes in the area of Dresden called the Dresden Concept. And we thought about what we could do in, in that case. And we ended up with the idea of not uh, working on these uh, respirator uh, items, but uh, in uh, supplying or uh, designing and producing um, personal uh, protection equipment, which was in that case, uh, this face sheet that you can see here. Um, it's based on an open source data uh, that was provided by a uh, Czech uh, company, um, which wasn't that much, uh, uh, wasn't that good to use in the clinics um, in, in the first design. So uh, our partners from the Dresden concept started to redesign the, the uh, open source data and came up with a different solution, which was then uh, printed on 3D printers. By that time, we had an, uh, a farm of 3D printers of almost 100 um, devices connected. Um, most of them in the research institutes, but also in companies uh, and in private households where people who had to stay at home just say, okay, I want to do something uh, to help in this, this crisis. And uh, if I could uh, support you here in, in using my 3D printer, please, um, this is my input. So, um, yes? Yeah, one minute. Yeah, one minute. Okay. So uh, in the end, we were able to produce more than 8,000 of these uh, face shields uh, that are delivered now. It's a complete free of charge uh, attempt. Um, so here you can see the, the partners that we are uh, working with. The Dresden concept is uh, this science network uh, that's thinking of the design production, also 
of distribution. We are somewhere in the middle. We try to uh, turn this now into a real product that can be sold. So there's a lot of regulatory uh, issues that have to be tackled within the next days. Um, we have found a company that will take over the production of these face shields. And we still are in contact with the healthcare providers um, that uh, need this uh, protection equipment. Uh, just today, we will deliver 1,200 more face shields to a clinic here in Leipzig. And yeah, we plan to continue this uh, for the next two weeks, and then the, the company has to take over. So far from my side. Perfect. Thank you, and congratulations. Uh, Theodora, it's your turn. Yes, good morning, everyone. Um, it's nice to be uh, able to give some examples from the from the Bulgarian side. Uh, you see my screen? Yes. Not yet. No. Not yet. Okay. Probably now working. Now, now we are seeing your screen. Okay, so I'll give an example of uh, one of the clusters, uh, the pioneering clusters here in Bulgaria. This is the Bulgarian furniture cluster. Uh, so very quickly, a few words about the cluster itself. I mean, the, uh, established in 2009. So as I said, uh, one of the first clusters, and you can see within the cluster, there are more uh, 50 SMEs, uh, 10 design studios, and uh, two NGOs, three universities, and the cluster itself has a uh, uh, bronze label. So the main uh, activities is basically of the cluster itself, it's contracting for the furniture and among the key um, uh, successful stories it's furnishing very big international uh, hotel groups across the entire Europe. Of course on top of that the cluster is doing many activities of uh, uh, working on different projects and doing some educational stuff. So what's happened after um, you can see some of the um, uh, basically some of the furniture done in the hotel groups. So once the uh, after the uh, state of emergency and the situation with coronavirus, so the first thing uh, that had, has been uh, you still see my screen. Yeah. Uh, so the, what happened after the uh, coronavirus, um, the cluster. First, uh, they made sure that they visited and spoke with um, all of the manufacturers and see what uh, safety, are, all the safety measures are taken. So how the work of the cluster can continue. And uh, they discussed about um, the this generation, which is uh, basically with the most um, could be affected. Basically, they first to stay home. But also the cluster this, took a decision talking with uh, the stakeholders that they can invent a new product that can um, be important for the safety of those still need to go to work. So they have created the uh, completely new uh, product. This is the plexiglass clear screens that you can see how they can be fitted in many different working stations on the um, open spaces uh, from a different place. So they can be used in bank offices, shops because of course Many uh, people still has to go to work, no matter the state of emergency. Uh, they are used a lot in the drug stores and uh, all these places that the counters are working uh, and are still seeing many, um, many uh, visitors. So this has been created in the first week of April, and so far, I mean, we are still not end of April, but uh, there uh, have been um, uh, purchases from Germany, Austria, Italy, and France, and more than 9,000 uh, screens has been purchased. So this is how the cluster uh, basically rearranged uh, the work and the efforts in order to have safety uh, during this period. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Theodora. Um, we have with us Rasa Goffman from Lithuania. Rasa, welcome. I'm giving you the Hello. right. Okay. The floor is yours. Thank you very much. So I'm um, taking my time and my presentation. Um, sharing it. It might take some time. Uh, although I would like to. <clears throat> 
It's in your phone. Mm, yeah. I see. Okay. I'm having fun, but uh, basically I, uh, I'm i using a mobile device and I see that I cannot show you the presentation, which makes, which is not so much fun. Then Don't worry, but um, you can tell us. Yeah, I think I can tell you. So um, basically what we did as clusters, we united. Uh, all the clusters we used to work with one project with the Lithuanian Innovation Agency and um, with the COVID crisis, we just united to work together to share the information and to use uh, Andrews because he is fantastic and um, to use the existing connections and also to use the existing governmental uh, institutions. Uh, what we did and what, what happened, uh, it's also um, the very useful uh, information gathering when we had almost 200 enterprises united in one network of who can supply, supply what. And also we had a very rapid action from uh, the innovation agency, which issued a call. Uh, and the call was for innovative ideas and um, it just ended last week and it resulted in almost 300 innovative ideas, ranging from medical supplies, 3D printing ideas, uh, some remote sensing thermometers, and so on and so forth. Oh yes, there's my presentation. Whoa! Um, okay, you can yes, go. Basically, I'm talking about the value of cluster community. You guessed right the slide. Uh, and and uh, as being trained, um, with the previous crisis of 2008-2009 and we in Lithuania were used to overcome crises and the Russian crisis of the late 90s and so on and so forth, we gathered together to work and we just evaluate, we are evaluating now that this crisis is different because it's completely global and uh, the value of connections and also uh, working together is uh, very important. So just in month or uh, month and a half, we have over, over 250 ideas, new ideas to be taken on board and to work from immediate mask printing and um, ultraviolet light using to make those masks uh, multiple use uh, to the innovative ideas uh, of learning methods because you have um, some learning methods which have to become uh, non-communicative, like to educate the nurses and so forth, because uh, virtual reality was not used for the nurses' training before it was thought too expensive, for example. And if we could go to the last slide, because I would like to expand on the example of um, our cooperation. Uh, what we did, um, because I work with Tulas and this is laser micro machining cluster, very, very technical. Um, and we just thought, what can we do for the, for the country? How can we um, give some value added, not printing the masks, we're not the 3D printers, and not giving quick technology because technologies are not that quick to create. Uh, and we thought that in the cluster, we have members who work with uh, virtual reality and, and organizing the information and we thought we could organize the information about the virus uh, and and we said okay organization using the Moodle system which was used only in the universities that's very interesting we could give that pro bono to the government but we need some um, something to show what can, what can we put into it and actually I talked to our film cluster and we came up with the idea to create uh, a video, a short animated video about the virus. Yes, 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 this is the slide. So we had, in just 10 days, we produced the first video and using the cluster connections, uh, in just in days, it went into national television. And just before the Easter, it was a good kick for people not to visit their mothers and their elders. Uh, and in, a, in another 10 days, we produced six more videos. 
uh, and there is um, I, we we are not hearing you. Uh, no, no, Rosa, we have lost your voice. I think it's the same for the rest. Okay, Rosa, we are not hearing you. <laughs> not hearing. <laughs> Don't worry. No, no, no. We cannot hear. We will skip and and no, no. We are not hearing you. Nobody no? has yeah. heard me. No. The last, the last. 30 seconds, okay? But you need oh to close. 30, 30 seconds for closing. We have heard you about the film, the video, and so, no problem. We are closing because we need to jump to the next one. Okay? Antonio? Yeah, we are hearing you now. So, sorry. Now you can hear me. Yeah, but we, we need to go to the next one. Sorry. Uh, thank you, Rasa, very much. Um, Daniel, your turn. Daniel Axe from Slovak uh, Clusters. Yes, okay. Uh, let me share the screen. Uh, I have I have prepared uh, I have prepared some examples from Slovakia from different uh, area or different uh, area. One is, can you see it? Yes, we can see it. Okay. So, so the first one is uh, representing local or regional level. Uh, we have one gold label cluster, Košice IT Valley, and uh, similarly, like BioSaxony presented, they were very active in developing a portal to get some home printer, home 3D printers, but also they collected some funds, and um, now along with uh, within the cluster and along with the technical university, they are uh, printing uh, face shields. Uh, as I checked on the website, they actually now cooperate or merged with another uh, larger platform within Slovakia, uh, which exists 35 days. And in 35 days, they collected 81,000, more than 81,000 euro and produced 16,000 shields. But there is need for much more now. So this was the first example. The second one is they created just recently portal so-called I will come later. Of course, it's in Slovak in the, at the web page, but I translated it into English. And it's some kind of voucher system that you as a customer, you can search on their portal for your favorite shop or hairdresser or someone, and you can actually uh, buy a voucher to pay him now and to get the service or product later. So this is also an interesting uh, portal or initiative that they, they support small entrepreneurs not to get get bankrupt in these difficult times. Another example is from the national policy level, and actually that's the inspiration from, from your, uh, from ECA, from, from this forum and from these uh, sessions. And we initiated, it means Union of Slovak Clusters, along with all our members, all our clusters, uh, that within the currently open call, it has not been closed yet, but it's open, we initiated uh, to include COVID-19 uh, that the clusters would contribute how the COVID-19 reflects their sectors, their clusters, their members, etc. And we have uh, written official letter to the ministry that even the call that was launched before the crisis will reflect or react to the COVID-19 situation. This is, this is from the national point of view, and we are also involved in two interact projects. And one is uh, on value chain, uh, focused on value chains, and we will look in the pilots that uh, the project is running already for more than one year, but we had steering committee meeting and we agreed that during the pilots, which uh, will start in July, we will include, include also COVID-19 impact uh, into analysis and how the, how the crisis impacted uh, value chains and, and how disrupted it, et cetera. So there are five uh, different sectors, advanced materials, ICT, health, energy, and bioeconomy. So we will look at it, everybody from uh, each own uh, side. And then the last one is the second chance for entrepreneurs and early warning system. Again, this is a project which is running. Uh, actually, the second chance is, is uh, something, an early warning system is something new, uh, which even commission has it in regulation which should be in place since uh, 
or from 2021. But I think that if the countries has already started to build a system, if they work on second chance, that they could very easily benefit this system to support entrepreneurs in this current situation, uh, either to identify those who are really uh, who are really, who are who are the, the first one that were hit by the crisis, or by to identify honest entrepreneurs, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So these are examples from Slovakia that we are working on with in different at uh, different levels. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you a lot, uh, Daniel, and congratulations, because there are excellent examples on, on that list. For example, the, the intention to reorient the current uh, projects uh, to the actual um, priority needs. Thank you. Uh, Daniel, are you ready? Daniel Kosnita from... Mm -hmm. I, thank you very much, Antonio. Yes, thank you. I would like to give the word to the cluster manager, which is with us today. So to Mrs. Alina Capitanu, the manager of Imago Mall, she could speak Perfect. better about the cluster. So okay. if you make her the presenter, Alina Capitanu. Yeah, I do that. Yes. Thank you, Daniela. Welcome, Alina. Thank yes, you. we are hearing you. We can see your screen. Yes. Seeing my screen now? Yeah. Hopefully. Perfect. Thank you very much, Antonio and Daniel, for uh, bringing me the opportunity to present um, Imago Mall cluster response to uh, COVID-19 uh, situation. Uh, our uh, first um, responses was uh, a solidarity campaign where we together. It's a campaign that we have um, launched in order to help our hostel members that were overwhelmed and unprotected staff in the fight against uh, COVID-19. So the first move that we have made was to make available a bank account in order to constitute a fund dedicated for the necessary urgently needed protection supplies. And also we have managed to realize disinfection tunnels uh, for the medical staff. Um, as our cluster have said, we also have uh, the movement to realize uh, 3D medical face shields. Um, one of our uh, startups produced uh, such uh, 3D medical face shields and um, we have um, managed to give to our hospitals members uh, this protective um, equipment. So this was the first line to have this already campaign. We have uh, realized the movement and evolve of civil society in um, um, managing this uh, campaign. And uh, another um, line was to facilitate and to promote innovative project and solution. Uh, so we have a program and solution uh, launched in Romania and we have uh, facilitated the development of um, project, uh, development of a protected uh, briefing with air disinfection uh, germs and textile material. It was a proposal submitted recently to our um, program solution. And we have facilitated this uh, project. Also another area was to um, uh, facilitate e-health projects. We have uh, um, a company, Romso, which is the founding member of Imanko Mall Cluster. We are collaborating with them since the beginning in e-health projects. And um, we have an MIM platform that is dedicated to the management of data between patients and doctors. And in the context of COVID-19, they have launched, we have launched this uh, digital app and uh, another functionality dedicated to medicine requests for the patients in order to connect the patients in a search of a medicine with a pharmacist that have this uh, medicine in stock because at the beginning it was a, a huge problem of queuing in front of um, uh, pharmacies in order to find the medicine that were uh, required in this uh, fight, uh, fight against COVID-19. So as a patient once a medicine request is submitted, pharmacist can answer uh, very easily through SMEs or uh, email and they could uh, uh, say that if they have a product in stock. And also all users save precious time because they are notified as soon as the medicine is in stock in an any partner uh, pharmacy. This uh, application is very useful also for, for pharmacies that can see all the medic medication requests that are active in the system and they can answer very easily by one click. Also, they have uh, launched um, this um, mobile app that is available on Google Play and any patients can 
um, download it from uh, Google Play and uh, install it on the smartphone. And by this application, they can request to pharmacies the medicine they, they need because of a state of emergency, they cannot go outside. For the elderly people, it's very useful, this kind of app, or for the family, in case that the elderly people do not have the skills Ali, to use it. We need to close. OK. Thank you. So uh, this mainly was our uh, projects and uh, ideas to fight against COVID. Thank you very much. You are very welcome. Congratulations. S selling samples of how you are adapting to your needs in the country. Uh, Anais, you are the last one. Hi. Welcome. Hi. Hi. Can I share? Yeah. Yeah. I'm giving you the rights. Okay. Okay, so I'm just going to go through just a few examples. So I'm the network manager of, uh, of the Council of European Bio Regions. I'm happy to see that a few of our members are in the room. Um, so basically, I, I uh, manage this network. We're about 40 uh, members all over Europe. Um, most of our members are clusters in the life science um, yeah, in the life science and uh, others might be uh, uh, more national agencies or um, local let's say public organization but all working in the life science sector so just a quick overview <clears throat> I wanted to share with you um, I think uh, my role is uh, well, very interesting in the sense that we got a feel of what's going on at uh, European level in the clusters uh, what we've seen in the, since the, the start of this crisis is that there are a lot of local actions. So a lot of our members at uh, local levels have put in place uh, online platforms, projects uh, to support their own uh, companies and, um, and their research against uh, the COVID. Then there are a lot of country action and this actually the calls that we had every morning uh, with uh, with the European Cluster Alliance have been really helpful to put, uh, also to connect people together uh, that were not necessarily um, knowing each other because of sectors. As I said, uh, we are in the life science, so not necessarily they all knew about uh, more industrial actors, for example. And then at European level, um, I think it helped a lot to understand what was going on, to be able to give that information to, uh, to the clusters and also to connect with uh, relevant stakeholders and and I'm again, very happy to see that uh, ULA participates a lot from the European Commission and also we had uh, a few other people from other DGs, uh, from, for example, from the public procurement and the, of innovation. And I think that helped a lot uh, to be able to understand what was going on and on a, let's say, more macro level. So just to give a few examples, I opened them here uh, on our clusters. Um, so, for example, uh, BioWin, uh, which is based in, uh, in Wallonia, in Belgium, they made rapidly an online platform uh, that you can see here. So this is one of the very uh, concrete examples. Um, I think if I come back here, um, BioM, also in Germany, you can see, um, so they have a COVID also a portal, but uh, you can see different types, uh, let's say, of uh, matchmaking and uh, what people were looking for. So I think that helped a lot, especially because we are right in the key uh, of uh, health and life science. So a lot of the company are actually involved in uh, looking for vaccines, uh, developing medical technologies and so on and so forth. Um, coming back, just one last example, for example, um, Biocat in, in Barcelona, where I, I am actually based, um, they change some of their uh, current programs that are teaching innovation to adapt to the current uh, COVID uh, situation, so uh, helping um, innovators to actually uh, get trained in uh, in developing their IDs and and um, and get a clinical immersion. So in in collaboration with local hospitals, which I think is very uh, obviously very important in these times. Also, um, I wanted to show very quickly this uh, Elixir is a big network um, that is actually part also of of Zebra, uh, they, they are very uh, data oriented. So they've made up a very interesting database uh, to support the COVID-19 research. So um, I think for our, our sector is very important 
um, and to access uh, relevant data on COVID uh, to, to, um, for the companies also to keep on uh, searching a, a cure or a vaccine or, or whatever. And then the last but not least, and I've seen that someone from Lyon Biopol is already um, online and, and will probably uh, show it, but I think a great initiative is this uh, matchmaking event uh, that will happen um, uh, next week, and I'm sure that person from Lyon Biopol can can share. But uh, we've also uh, made a good dissemination of this uh, event, and a lot of the clusters all over are are moving it uh, within their companies. So just very quickly, lesson learned. Um, sorry. Um, we've uh, made, so every week on the Thursday, we have an open mic webinar, so all the clusters that are part um, of CBER, but also external, because, uh, for example, Antonio participated and, um, and, um, and more of you uh, can just jump in that uh, conversation and see what's going on um, and, and share needs, stories, etc. platforms that they're doing. We've had a lot of exchanges on the platforms. Um, through the webinars, we um, every morning, and I really want to thank uh, Antonio and, and all this uh, very great core group of uh, ECA uh, to do these webinars. It, it meant a lot in terms of connection, um, especially to know what's going on and, and to connect the right people. Then uh, an example of that is, for example, the feedback that we had on the ERDF funds announcement. I think it was very important to, uh, to have a quick uh, feedback with the clusters to know if they understood what was going on in terms of the regional development funds. And, uh, and we got that back very quickly also to, to, uh, to some of the officers. So I think that, uh, that let's say, webinars and things allow us to, to, um, to give a quick feedback and understand if, if uh, the policies are understood. Um, in terms of national also connection, as I said before, uh, in Italy, for example, we connected several clusters from life science to other sectors. Also for CBER, we are a part of an initiative that is an open innovation test bed. Um, so it's a big project uh, on nano-enabled medical technologies, and we are currently working on finding uh, ways to open challenge for uh, COVID-related solutions in nanotechnology. So this would we are on it. Uh, so we will issue a call, I hope, very soon. And then finally, uh, we are, uh, so I'm currently putting up together a survey for the, for the clusters that are part of CBER to, um, to measure the real impact uh, of COVID in their own uh, let's say, ecosystems, but also uh, to try to help in, the, for example, the, the rapid alert uh, to, to know in terms of the value chains and so on, uh, how clusters are reacting. So more or less um, <laughs> summarized, I hope. Uh, what we're doing at uh, CBER and especially very active uh, life science clusters we have. You are doing an excellent work. You, you, uh, and you are being very active, not only with your network, but linking with everybody. So congratulations, Anais. Uh, it's uh, it's uh, nine, half past, no, 20 past nine, and we have only 10 minutes. We could extend if you agree some means uh, we, we decided some time ago that if the session is especially important, we could extend. But I am sure that some of you cannot uh, go uh, further than the, the half past nine. So we will give now the floor to um, Andre. Uh, sorry, because I don't know the so nice, Sorry, Andre, you are very, very welcome. You are, will explain us what is the SMEs and Boy Network and how can we relate with you. Uh, I'm giving you the floor, the presentation rights. Uh, good morning. Uh, good morning, everybody. Um, I will just see whether I can show you. We are seeing your, your phone. <laughs> I can see your phone, yeah, yeah, because I have to. So it's a bit small perhaps but you uh, may see, you see a pdf uh, it's the it's the yes. only way i can do it yes. from it perhaps you um, can turn it to the uh, or, uh, horizontal um, yeah up yeah hey that's Far better. okay okay thank you so uh, good morning everybody if, uh, let me let me spend 5 seconds of my 5 minutes to say that i'm extremely impressed i'm since yesterday i was yesterday in the webinar and i'm extremely impressed with you guys uh, 
um, uh, did, and uh, and that's really that's really marvelous. So, um, the EU, the SME Envoy Network is uh, to talk a bit in your jargon the policy cluster. Um, the the cluster as such exists, or the, the SME Envoy Network exists since. Uh, 2000 and uh, beginning of 2012 uh, it was introduced by the small business act which some of you may know and i pay particular tribute to helena mora who is here bemdia uh, who is part of actually the the sme envoy network in uh, in the wider sense so uh, they are 27 uh, people obviously one per member state uh, who are the top or sort of second in command of SME policy in the member states. It depends obviously on national organizations, so some are ministers or state secretaries, others directors general of ministries, and again others um, presidents, directors of SME agencies, as I said, depending on the organization. They meet under normal circumstances four uh, times a year. Our last meeting was planned for the 27th of March. You can imagine what happened to that meeting. And uh, they are discussing uh, the whole of uh, SME policy implementation. Um, as you know, a lot of SME policy is soft law. That means um, we're not having the benefit of the big baseball bite of uh, infringement procedures and so on. But what looks as a this as an inconvenience is actually an advantage because you can do many more things than you could do um, when if you if you would only have uh, the powerful but nevertheless limited uh, means that uh, directives and regulations give you. So, what is so special about the Envoy Network? Well, technically speaking, it's nothing more than a Commission expert group. But because the Commission attaches great importance to it, beginning with uh, Commissioner Tajani quite some time ago, uh, the member states have always sent uh, their top level people there and uh, always the same, with very few exceptions. It means it's a closely knit group. People know each other very well and work very well with each other. <clears throat> we have organized their work in a sort of rapporteur system that means uh, the envoy for this in this country is rep uh, responsible for a specific uh, subject, a specific theme, uh, works with the others as a sort of leader on this uh, theme and reports to the others. We're sharing the reports and the, uh, some of them are extremely good. Uh, they go really into depth and they ask the, the not so, uh, uh, how to say, they also spell out the problems that, that there are in SME policy. Another speciality of this network is that it meets not in itself only the member states, but it meets uh, with the European top level business organizations. When I say top level, I mean the umbrella organizations of national chambers, of national SME organizations, so the likes of Business Europe, uh, Euro chambers and so on. They all have a seat around the table. And the second uh, particularity uh, is that it is, in my mind, the only or one of the few commission expert groups that has a direct link to the Council. It reports since 2013, once a year, to the Competitiveness Council, which integrates it further into policy making. Um, with the uh, SME strategy that was adopted by the Commission as part of the industrial package in the beginning of March, as you, as you certainly uh, can realize, this was uh, uh, going a bit under uh, in, 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 uh, in view of the COVID news, but we adopted a new SME strategy, which will help us to help SMEs uh, out of the strategy, out of the, um, out of the COVID um, uh, problem. Uh, the role of the envoy has been further increased and uh, or further enlarged. And we are also part of the so-called rapid alert function uh, to uh, deal with disruptions of uh, supply chains, which in the context of uh, the cluster work, which is also part of this rapid alert function, will also play an important role. Uh, the last thing that I want to mention is that we, since 2008, so even before the creation of the Envoy Network, have what is called the SME Performance Review, uh, that's an annual uh, report on how SMEs are doing, which is a wealth of information and a very nice tool to wave a little bit at member states who are not doing so 
well when it comes to SME policy or also to praise those who do well. Uh, I will send afterwards the links or share the links via uh, my colleagues Eva and, uh, and Karsten um, so that you can have a look at that uh, and you could even see how your member state are doing. What are we going to do here? We are going to uh, help uh, you insofar as we will provide the link to the European policy level and we will provide where necessary also the link to the national policy level because I know that um, not all clusters are in a position to have this very strong link uh, to, to the national policy level. We will we'll in the future provide this link and that would be all from my side. Thank you, Antonio. Oh, you are really welcome and, and, and I want to express our total we put ourselves at your disposition also because uh, I am sure that you um, you can uh, uh, but you are critical on this crisis and and we need to help you okay and for sure you can help us so very 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 welcome uh, I don't know if uh, it's thank you Antonio useful. Antonio I, I don't know just one moment uh, I, I don't know if it would be possible to have the European Cluster Alliance as, as one of the observers that you mentioned before? Would be something... uh, the, the, there is a technical answer to that that I will spare you. Uh, I can give you the political answer. Uh, we can definitely invite you uh, for different meetings. Uh, whether you can have the, the, the technical answer refers to the question whether you can be a permanent observer. I leave that out here at the moment. This is not for this, but we can definitely invite you uh, to to the meetings. We're at the moment exploring how to do an online meeting uh, because, uh, as with member states, uh, you can imagine that there are a lot of. Uh, uh, data protection, or not so much data protection, but security issues. So we cannot use uh, Zoom or something like that. So we're at the moment exploring how to how to arrange that. But if there is a meeting anytime soon, and I hope there will be, uh, because we have to work uh, uh, also collectively, then we will invite you. Ah, yeah, I forgot one thing. I'm sorry. I'm abusing my mic. Um, we are giving a weekly update about national measures and assessing them. So I can share that uh, with you. This is not uh, private information. I can share that with you. I will do so via Eva and Karsten. Uh, it's a weekly update every Tuesday on how member states are doing uh, with their COVID measures and our assessment to it. I, if you don't mind, I will invite you to give uh, to explain the report to us in a specific session next week, if you agree. I can do so. Then I would rope in a colleague of mine uh, who is uh, better placed to talk about that. I I, I will give the introduction and then I will yeah. give the floor to him. Yeah. Yes. That, happy that to do so. That will be wonderful. That will be very important because we need to know what you are doing. It's very Absolutely. Important for this group. Thank you. Thank you very much, Hervé. Uh, good morning, everybody. Andre, thank you very much for your presentation. To be honest, I didn't know about the SME Envoy Network and. Um, just to back up on the, uh, the, the, the webinar we had yesterday, um, I think having a special connection with you is very relevant to um, hopefully uh, encourage, as I said, more and more SMEs to, uh, 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 to enter um, cluster networks. Um, the big names and, and, and mid cap you know, uh, companies are important, of course, but SMEs have uh, specificities, as uh, as you know, and 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 we need these specificities to possibly answer the value chain disruption by those days. And I am really looking forward to, as Antonio said, to strengthen, you know, our connection and to talk more often in the future. It's really important. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Hervé. Just very briefly, the link is now done. I'm I'm here and I'm I'm perhaps not going to attend every of your meetings, but I'm certainly I'm certainly going to keep that link up uh, also via Carsten and Eva. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Antonio, uh, can I come in? Oh, for sure, for sure. Yeah. 
because as we are running out of time and I see there are several other commission colleagues who are all from different director channels who have joined. So dear colleagues, if you think you have things you would want to share with uh, Eka, the best thing is to see in the time. So if you don't want to put it now in the chat, send me an email afterwards that you're interested and I can link you and then you can maybe also present in the future or discuss further on your topics with the Alliance. I saw several DGs being present, but we won't be able now to, to uh, speak with all of them. But I want also to thank these colleagues uh, that they joined this morning, that gave you a flavor of uh, what clusters can do. And if you have further interest, please feel free that we uh, go a step further. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much, Ula. And thank you to everybody that is joining us uh, today. I, I will. Uh, wrap up just uh, saying that uh, this is, was not a typical session. Uh, the typical session for us is, I will show you now, uh, more in, in uh, divided in four blocks. The first one is five minutes about one presentation, one success case, just to, to framework, uh, to make the framework of the session, okay? We speak later about the conceptual framework. Uh, you could be invited to speak about it for 20 minutes, it depends on the number of uh, participants, or uh, speakers, sorry, but uh, we, we could have uh, two speaking 10 minutes each or two, 120, okay? Uh, and we now, and later try to speak our needs and potential solutions. For the next days of this week, and we uh, meet even in weekends, but only uh, we change uh, to the half past nine instead of uh, half past eight, okay? This is the, the agenda for this week. You are invited to participate if you think that you can you can add to the contribute to the discussion, okay? Or, and you are also invited to uh, propose experts if you have them in your knowledge in your network or you know about them. Please propose them to us, okay? Because that will be uh, important to enrich the discussion, okay? Um, and it's time to close. Uh, we try to be very respectful of the of the timing. Uh, thank you, everyone. As Ula has said, don't doubt to contact her or myself uh, just to, to propose next uh, sessions. Uh, and see you soon. I hope see you tomorrow if you want. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, thank you guys. Goodbye. Bye. Thank you, Antonio. Thank you. Goodbye. Have a nice Thank day, you. everyone. Bye. Thank you, Antonio. Goodbye. Goodbye, Antonio. Au revoir, Antonio. Au revoir, au revoir, Herve. My amigo. <laughs>